Hello, everybody. Oh, <laughs> Mia's got a time machine. Today, Mia is going to take us on a journey through time, back to ancient Egypt to learn about the story of Passover, a time when the Israelites were enslaved and a brave man named Moses did some pretty amazing things to set them free. He not only changed the course of history, he also changed the course of a river. The Israelites were the Jewish people who lived thousands of years ago in the land of Israel. Do you remember we talked about Moses giving the Jewish people the Ten Commandments in our lesson about Yom Kippur? Well, you're going to learn more about things that Moses did and the story of extraordinary events that took place so long ago. You'll also discover the symbols, traditions, and foods relating to this very important Jewish holiday. So, get ready to learn all about the holiday of Passover. Welcome back! Today we're going to talk about the Jewish holiday called Passover. To understand the traditions and symbols of Passover, we need to go back thousands of years. The holiday is based on a story from the Torah called Exodus. It takes place when cruel leaders called pharaohs ruled over the land of Egypt and enslaved the Jewish people. The Jews were treated very badly. They prayed and prayed to be set free. Then their prayers were answered and God sent a powerful man named Moses to help set them free. Moses went to the head Pharaoh and said, let my people go. But Pharaoh said, no, he had no desire to set the Israelites free. And you wouldn't believe what happened next. The story is that God sent 10 plagues to the land as punishment for the way the Israelites were being treated. These plagues were diseases or natural disasters that were meant to teach important lessons. They were things like the skies filling with locusts, which are like big grasshoppers who fly in large groups and eat farmers' crops. Another plague was dangerous hailstorms pretty bad stuff. But the most severe plague was the only one that bothered Pharaoh. The angel of death came to kill the oldest son of each Egyptian slave owner. But God told the angel of death to pass over the houses of the Jewish families and spare the lives of their sons. That's where the word Passover comes from. Finally, Pharaoh let the Israelites leave Egypt. They had to rush to gather their belongings before Pharaoh changed his mind. The Israelites followed Moses out of Egypt, but Pharaoh decided he wanted them back and charged after them. Pharaoh and his army cornered the Israelites at the bank of the Red Sea. There was no way out, but Moses prayed and a miracle happened. The waters of the Red Sea parted so that the Israelites could cross along dry land. Pharaoh's army followed close behind, but the sea waters closed over them and the Israelites were finally free. And so Jewish people all over the world celebrate Passover to remember these miracles and their freedom from slavery. Now, let's take a look at how people celebrate this miraculous holiday. The holiday comes during the spring and lasts for eight days. There is so much to do to get ready. When the Israelites had to hurry to leave their homes in fear of the Pharaoh changing his mind, people didn't have time for their bread to rise or leaven. They had to take it with them the way it was. So that's why during Passover, people eat the flat unleavened bread called matzah. And that leads to a Passover tradition. Many people get rid of or give away any food in their house that has leavened or risen, like bread, cookies, and cakes. Why do you think this is done? 
It's to remind people how quickly the Israelites had to leave and that they could only bring unleavened bread with them. One of the main events of Passover is a Seder. Do you remember we talked about a Tu Bishvat Seder? Passover has a special Seder too, when the holiday begins at sunset. People read the story of Exodus using a book called a Haggadah. Everyone takes turns reading different parts of the book. Sometimes the person leading the Seder will lean on a pillow and relax as a symbol of being free and having the choice to be at peace. Like with other Jewish holidays, the meal begins with, well, let me ask you, can you guess how the meal begins? If you said with blessings over the candles and wine, you'd be right. On the table is a Seder plate. Each item has a special meaning relating to the story of Passover. Here are a few of them. Horseradish and lettuce are bitter herbs that symbolize the bitterness of slavery. By the way, the horseradish has beets added to it for that rich purple color. A mixture of apples and nuts and wine called charoset represents the clay or mortar Israelites used when they were enslaved and forced to build brick structures under the blazing hot sun. Parsley is a symbol of hope and good things to come. One of the traditions at the Seder table is to dip the parsley or lettuce into the salt water to remember that in times of hope and happiness, we must not forget the tears shed in the past. During the retelling of the Passover story, everyone recites the ten plagues. Remember those? Locusts, hail. It's a reminder that the Egyptians were also God's children and they too suffered. The youngest child reads or sings a part of the Haggadah called the Four Questions to learn more about the holiday and its symbols. Do you remember what the flatbread is called? <laughs> right, matzah! Many people don't eat bread for the whole eight days of Passover. Instead, they eat matzah or baked goods made from ground matzah called matzah meal instead of flour. Coconut macaroons are pretty popular too. The Passover table is said with delicious food, including matzah ball soup. One fun part of the Seder is when a piece of matzah called the afikomen is hidden for children to find. All the kids scramble to find it, and whoever finds it gets a small prize. Finally, at the very end of the meal, the family opens the door as a symbol of welcoming one of God's special messengers, Elijah. Many people believe that Elijah will come to bring peace and understanding. There is no real person coming through the door, but it's a meaningful symbol of welcoming good things and hope into the world. I hope you enjoyed this video about Passover. In our next video, you'll be hearing about Moses again and the holiday called Shavuot. Check out the PDF that goes with this lesson for fun activities and more information, like other items on the Seder plate and the meaning behind them. Thanks for joining me today, and in the meantime, remember to always be clever. Hey, hey.